Bulavinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selena, I'm from Tauvenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, search for missing plane and duo continues in Lombasa. Family waits in hope for missing flight instructor. And telecommunications body clarifies ban phone issue. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spate. Thick fog and heavy rain is hindering the search and rescue mission for the missing Cessna aircraft along with its two. Eleanor Turangai View reports the ground and aerial search of Ndongoru village in Madhuwata were both suspended this afternoon. One hour into its search along this mountainous region, the joint aerial operation by police, the Pacific Flying School, and first responders ended. The thick fogs and heavy rain made it impossible to get clear visibility of the terrain where the plane is believed to have crashed around midday yesterday. I was planting Yangona yesterday and I heard an aircraft flying around. I heard it fly over me three times before I heard a loud crash. Several other Ndongoru villagers who were attending to their Yangona farms in these mountains yesterday heard similar sounds. Some even saw the plane flying above them several times. And explain to us what they saw. They saw the plane flying above in circles several times. Not long after that, they heard a loud bang. They knew that it had crashed. We then relayed this to the police and military. If it's not found today, tomorrow the whole village will be behind this operation. We will also seek the assistance of other villages in our district so that we can find the plane. The search was called off this afternoon after the weather failed to improve. All three teams conducting the search have been called back to base. The search and rescue mission is expected to resume at 8 tomorrow morning. We now cross over live to Eleanor Terangai View. Eleanor, what's the situation like in Lombasa right now and what will become of the search and rescue operations tomorrow? still has not improved. There is still heavy rain and uh, there, the fog is still visible in the mountains uh, surrounding Lambasa. But despite that, the search and rescue mission will still go ahead tomorrow. Now, this search and rescue operation tomorrow will be massive because it will involve the villages from the Tikina of Wailevu in Madhuwata. I spoke to the district representative Semirandranra earlier today and he mentioned that all men have have to report to Ndongoru village at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. This is to help police and military comb the mountains in the Ndongoru area. Now they say that since it is believed that the plane has uh, crashed rather in their area, it is their responsibility to help find it. And the aerial survey will continue weather permitting and we also understand that a second helicopter will join the operation from tomorrow. So Jackie, this is the second night that the plane has been missing. We can only hope and pray that the weather clears so that the plane and the two missing crew members are found to at least give some closure to their families. So true. Thank you so much for that, Eleanor. If it's God, God's will, then let it be. These were the words of Moses M. Balendrokandroka, who is awaiting word on the missing aircraft after it failed to land at the Lambasa airport yesterday. Balin Rokondroka's son, Iliesa Tawalo, was the instructor on board the Pacific Flying School Cessna 172 aircraft, which is still missing. Philippe and I castle with this story. It's a dark day for this father as a day has gone by without any information of the aircraft being found, which his son, Iliesa Tawalo, was in. We are still waiting for any information from the relevant stakeholders. However, we have left everything in God's hands. The 59-year-old who was emotional told FBC News 
that his son Ilesa was a very caring man who loved and served God. Balain Rockenrocker says that before the tragic incident, he had told his son he wanted to go to the village. He told me to wait for him in the afternoon after he returned from work as he was going to buy me a new mobile phone so that he could contact me while I was in the village. This was the last time I saw him. He left around 7 that morning. Tawalo had been a flying instructor for five years and was also qualified to fly bigger planes. However, he did not. He was waiting for his sister, who was also studying to become a pilot, so that he could be the one to teach her on how to fly a plane. The day they informed me that Ilyasa was missing, I did not know what to do or think of as we had just spoken in the morning before he left. I just went into the room and prayed. It's been a difficult day for those at the Pacific Flying School as two of their comrades are still missing after their plane failed to land at the Lambasa airport. Family, close friends and students have held closed prayer sessions hoping for the return of Ilesa Tawalo and Merlesita Lutu. Philip and Aikaso, FBC News. Civil Aviation Minister Ayas Said Kayum confirms an independent investigator will be appointed shortly to carry out investigations into the missing Cessna 172 aircraft and its two passengers. Said Kayum says the search will continue until the plane is found. He adds the Fiji Rescue Coordination Centre, which is made up of AFL, CAF, police, military and the Navy, will continue the search. The last location on the automatic dependent surveillance broadcast OEDSB for the Cessna 172 aircraft recorded by ATC is about six nautical miles south-southwest of Lambasa and approximately one nautical mile west-northwest of Navakurua, Navakurua village. In the meantime, of course, we are still hopeful that we'll find the crash site and the search will continue until we have done so. The Telecom Authority of Fiji has today clarified that digital enhanced cordless telecommunications is not allowed to be used in the country. The DECT cordless telephones has been banned from importation or use in the country since 2010, but some still have these phones with them. The authority says it is an offence to import or use the DECT cordless phones as it harmfully interferes with licensed 3G networks. The public now has until March 27th to comply with the notice of surrendering any such device to the authority. The authority will exercise its powers under the promulgation for anyone found in possession and will be fined up to $20,000 or even 21 months of imprisonment. In that interference, you will experience uh, drop calls, you will experience uh, very poor call quality and also very slow or you cannot browse the internet. Still to come, abuse of e-cards, a major concern. A new MOU for Japan, root sign. Stay with us. Bula, <laughs> Attorney General Ayas Said Kayum today received over 100 motor vehicles, including 30 motorcycles for government from ASCO Motors in Nambua. ASCO Motors has leased the motor vehicles to the government, which will also replace some vehicles whose leases have expired. Said Kayum says this is another milestone to ensure all government agencies, ministries and departments have the right level of resources to be able to be responsive to the public needs and demands. He says about 130 motorcycles were ordered for police as they need to be a bit more mobile in respect of attending to traffic and management issues. It means that from today, there will be 30 more police officers out on these motorcycles on the road for the ordinary people's safety and security and also maintaining their presence on the roads. The vehicles over here is not only going through the four-wheel drives, 
they aren't only going to the police, they're also going to the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Health, they're going to the RFMF, they're going to the Ministry of Lands, they're going to Women and Poverty Alleviation, a number of other agencies. The Fiji Bus Operators Association has raised concerns that some passengers are abusing disposable e-cards. President Richard Lal says some passengers are taking advantage of the disposable card regulation by expecting drivers to have change for high denomination notes when they buy low denomination cards. Anna Ravulo reports. Bus drivers today reveal to FBC News that they face a lot of challenges when dealing with disposable e-ticketing cards one being verbally abused. The difficulties we face is that passengers bring big notes we don't have change for and sometimes we don't even get disposable cards. People they bring the disposable card money, they'll bring $50, they'll bring $20, they bring that much kind of money early in the morning to buy the disposable card and we don't have, the, what you call it, we don't have the change to give them that uh, disposable card money. And they always say bad things to us. The Consumer Council Chief Executive says that people should be wary that bus drivers cannot handle cash anymore. Daily commuters should not use disposable cards every day. They should only be used during emergencies. Uh, for those consumers who are or passengers getting onto the buses, they need to be wary of that rather than uh, walking in with $100 bill and they expect to buy a $2 uh, disposable card. Fiji Bus Operators Association President Richard Lal says when disposable cards were designed, it was intended for tourists and people living in the outer islands who visit the main islands. It was not meant for regular passengers as they are expected to travel using their registered e-cards. The Consumer Council says that there needs to be more awareness on the use of disposable cards to help both bus passengers and the drivers. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. The Suva Magistrates Court has denied bail for the Asian woman who has been charged by FICAC for alleged bribery. Bail was denied due to her illegal status in the country. Lin Gao appeared in court last Friday and was remanded in custody after FICAC counsel informed the magistrate that she has an illegal status in the country as a work permit expired in 2015. Gao, an investor, is charged with one count of bribery and one count of possession of forged document. It is alleged Gao had offered $100 to an immigration officer. It is also alleged that she had in her possession an altered work permit. The matter has been adjourned to March 12th. Fiji and the Japanese government today formalized the amendment of the route schedule annexed to the air services agreement between the two countries. Minister for Aviation Ayaside Kayum says this connectivity will help boost both economies. Anna Ravola reports. The much-anticipated Nandi Narita direct flight means more investment opportunities not only for Fiji, but for other Pacific Island countries as well. We'd like to, of course, encourage the, the Japanese tourists uh, to use Fiji as a, um, as a bouncing board to other Pacific Island countries. And I think it's an opportunity for other Pacific Island countries uh, to connect to Japan. And Fiji, of course, uh, does not mind being the facilitator of that and the point from which they can go to other Pacific Island countries. The Japanese ambassador says the direct flights will definitely be beneficial for them. I'm very optimistic that the resumption of direct flights between our two countries, which ceased in 2009, will increase Japanese tourist arrivals in Fiji. Usually connecting flights take Japanese tourists 15 to 17 hours to reach Fiji, but from July 3rd, it will be just nine hours. We also expect business travel and trade between our countries to also grow significantly. Aviation Minister Ayasad Kayum says they look forward to more Japanese participation in commerce, trade and finance sectors in the future. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. In sports coming up ahead, table tennis players prepare for Oceania Championship. But up next is Anna with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening coming up. Over $5 million donated for small business grants. And in growing Fiji, new trucks to enhance service delivery for council. Stay with us.
Total Tekinal na Barong ng Bula FM Number 2 and Serie Bula! Bula FM Number 2 and Serie The Indian government has donated $5.9 million for the second phase of the Micro Small Business Grant Initiative. Trades Minister Fayaz Kuo says the money will be used to help over 5,000 individuals. Sanya Nimbola reports. 5,900 individuals will benefit from the Memorandum of Understanding signed with the Indian government this morning. As you are aware, the MSBG initiative is providing support to the smallest of the small businesses to individuals who have a business and want to grow it, uh, or those who want to start a business. Hence the funding is a maximum of $1,000. Indian High Commissioner to Fiji Vishwa Sapkal says the Indian government has shown confidence in the MSBG initiative. I'm really happy that uh, the first phase, when uh, we signed the MOU in uh, June 2016, uh, that was successfully completed and as we have uh, just noted that uh, as conveyed by Honorable Minister that uh, 4,752 beneficiaries uh, were, were uh, um, uh, received uh, this grant from Indian assistance. The MSBG initiative began in 2014 and since the Fijian government has registered more than 17,970 micro and small entrepreneurs. The initiative is believed to have touched the lives of approximately 89,000 Fijians. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. We now join Sanifa from the HFC Bank with the latest from the trading world. Thank you. Let's have a quick look at the markets. New Zealand experienced a larger than expected trade deficit in January. Their exports of 4.31 billion were weaker than estimated as demand fell while the imports came in higher than expected at $4.87 billion. There were some minor releases from the U.S. this morning. New home sales came out at 593000 and the Dallas Federal Manufacturing Business Index for February increased to 37.2 from the 33.4 last recorded. American investors will now be looking forward to hearing from the new Federal Reserve Chair for hints on the future pace of policy tightening in the United States. We are expecting a number of economic indicators from the U.S. tomorrow, so we'll wait to see how the market reacts. That's all for now. Pinaka. Thanks, Sinifa. Looking at today's currency exchange rate set this morning for the Fijian dollar, the foreign exchange market saw the Fiji dollar on the rise against the American dollar, the PNG Kina and the Japanese yen, with minor slippage against other currencies we follow. Taking a look at the commodities market, oil prices were on the rise. Oil prices up at $63.99 a barrel. Gold dropped a few cents to $1,331.95 per ounce. And silver closed at $16.62 an ounce. In growing Fiji, the Nisinu Town Council will acquire two nine-ton garbage compactor trucks to supplement its current fleet. This was being made possible following a grant agreement between the council and the Japanese government. Kritika Kumar reports. The new garbage compactor trucks will enhance Nasinu Town Council's rubbish collecting services. The amount of waste that we collect annually is 16 million kg or 16,000 tons, which equates to about 4,000 4, to 5,000 truckloads. The Japanese government will provide over $449,000 to the council through its grant assistance for grassroots human security projects for the trucks. The project is part of our continued commitment in assisting municipal councils in Fiji to create cleaner and healthier environment for its communities. We can together achieve a lot in terms of environment. So once again, Your Excellency, on behalf of the government of Fiji and on behalf of the Zinu Town Council, I want to say thank you so much uh, for this uh, donation. The council serves around 120,000 ratepayers. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. That's business this evening. Here's Jamie now with sports. Thanks, Anna, and good evening in sports tonight. 
Run runner available for flying Fijians June test. And Wallaby Henry Spade to be guest speaker at Sports Awards. This and more coming up. I am Pramila Vairuku Reki Reki Se. Subha Meri Aak Khunti Hai, Toh Mai Mirchi FM Sunti Hu. Mirchi FM is number one. It's so hot. हम लोग बार टाउन के कैरियर ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेफरेंसी से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते हैं मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट आई लव मिर्ची एफएम हमें स्पिन तो कहता है वो आके मिर्ची एफएम में सबसे अच्छा गाना बजे मिर्ची � Fijian speedster Semi Randra could be playing for the Fiji Airways Flying Fijians in June. Speaking from France, coach John McKee said a meeting with Randra yesterday following to launch 27-20 win over La Rochelle was fruitful. Rasnil Prasad with the details. Semi Randra will soon be making his debut for the Flying Fijians. The Toulon winger has already represented the country in sevens and rugby league and will now be playing 15s in June. To be able to confirm that with a face to face, I've been communicating with him, um, you know, in, in recent months, but um, this is the first time we actually got face to face. Flying Fijian coach John McKee says Randrandra will be included in the extended squad and will most likely feature in the midfield area. He's been showing very good, good form for Toulon of late, um, and very interesting for me that he's been playing in the 13 which is, um, could be a key position for us going forward. Run Runner's inclusion will give Maki a lot of options. He can prove deadly on the wings or in the centres for the flying Fijians. Pashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The Fiji Rugby Union is still waiting for Alosia Nanduva's US visa. Coach Gareth Weber says they're keeping their fingers crossed, hoping he joins the team in the next 24 hours. Meli Tavanga reports. The Hamilton 7's man of the final, Alosio Nandova's fate of playing his first ever Las Vegas tournament will be known tomorrow. Exhausting every avenue possible to try and get him here. Um, obviously, he was down in my squad and trained right up until the point where his, his visa wasn't granted. Uh, very disappointed in that, I must admit, because I wanted to see him uh, capitalise on the development he'd taken through, uh, certainly through, obviously, Sydney and into Hamilton and taking some of that form. Coach Gareth Baber says Mbatini Savuluyata has joined the camp as a standby player for Nanduva. He has already had a run with the side. Abilities and obviously as a 400 meter runner as well has uh, has good uh, endurance in his sprinting. Um, so uh, you know you might see him in there, but uh, as I said, you know I'll make those decisions over the next couple of days. Fiji will have a hit out session against Spain tomorrow morning, where Baber is likely to test his players on certain areas. We play against Spain. They play a nice quick game. And I want to see us move quickly around the field as well as moving quickly uh, that we get the most out of our game as well. So um, it'll be good. Have a good relationship with the Spanish as well. Fiji plays Russia in its first match before playing France and then Kenya in the Las Vegas tournament. Melitavanga, FBC Sports. The All Black 7 side has arrived in Las Vegas and will be aiming to win their second title this season. Fiji will host the first ultra-tracking marathon in April, where 50 runners from across the globe will participate. This marathon will start from the coast of Rakiraki, and the participants will run through the terrain of Vitilevu to the finish line at the Singatoka Sand Dunes. Eroni Tuinuku with the details. It will be a unique opportunity for Fijians to experience a different format of marathon, but it requires a lot of sacrifice. We're aiming for one of the, the race, the Vodafone Lost Island Ultra, to be one of the toughest in the world. Um, so in order to do this, this is the first year the event has been held, so we've capped the numbers at 50. We want to make sure that it all goes smoothly this year. Um, and if you're coming to do it, you have to have done a multi-day, multi-stage ultra marathon in the last 18 months. So we want to be confident that the people that are coming in to do this are actually well prepared. The week-long race will be a mental and physical battle for the 50 participants. The, it'll be a five-stage race, so held over six days. 
So the longest day is going to be an 80 kilometer day, which is all the way from Numbutauta village, which is pretty much as close to the center of Viti Levu as you can get, all the way down to Singatoka in a day. Fiji's runner Anna Kali says she is excited to be part of the event. Uh, I've done one before and I'm just looking forward to the whole thing, even though I know it's going to be really tough. The race will be held from the 2nd to the 8th of April. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. The Fiji table tennis team will compete at the Oceania Championships in Australia next month. Association President Anthony Ho says this will provide an opportune time for players to gauge themselves ahead of the Commonwealth Games in April. Meli Tavanga has more. The five-member team missed its Japan trip due to some misunderstandings. We are just build, uh, training here locally. Unfortunately, we were not able to go to Japan as, um, as we had um, uh, pre uh, prepared ourselves for um, in this last week. Uh, they were due to depart uh, this week. Um, due to some circumstances behind our control, we couldn't go to Japan. Association President Anthony Ho says this will not hinder their preparations for the championship next month. We are uh, now focused on training and going to the Oceania Championships, which is to be held at the Commonwealth Games venue from the um, 15th to the 20th of March. Uh, Vicky Wu was just come, uh, was actually just came back from uh, Melbourne and was selected to uh, at the uh, to attend the Elevate uh, High Performance Center. The the rest of the players are actually now still training here and uh, uh, building up to the games. The team will represent Fiji at the Commonwealth Games, which runs through the 4th to the 15th of April in Gold Coast, Australia. Melitavanga, FBC Sports. Fiji-born Wallabies winger Henry Spade will be the guest speaker at the Fiji Sports Awards at the FMF Gymnasium in Suva this Saturday. Also his family, as you know, Henry's from, uh, he's got links in the West, uh, to VCC in Wunda and also in, the, uh, in Nandi, so... He's asked that he can just spend a bit of time with his, uh, with his uh, family at Nandi Airport because I think he gets in at 3 o'clock on Saturday. The Fiji Volleyball Federation plans to set up a specific indoor hub by next year. President Nanise Vudango says their goal is to host international matches in the future and they need a purpose-built complex for such events. I just got the approval from the Oceanet to make Fiji as a hosting country. They're all looking at Fiji as a, as a center. So that ocean in development looks at volleyball alone. It's actually not going to be a multi-purpose uh, court. It's, it's actually going specific, specifically for volleyball. Despite Breves' 45-28 to loss to Toulouse in the French top 14 yesterday, a late burst of brilliance by its backline that produced a try to Fiji and Sevenai and Alala provided some consolation for the side. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and in new media. We check out some of the cool features in the Samsung Galaxy S9. That's coming up. Bula, Kero Mai Singatoka, Kero Ndo Tali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I have an energy. Seven things you didn't know Samsung's phone could do. Let's find out in tonight's new media. It's weather time now with Angie.
Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Rainy periods causing flooding down streams and low-lying areas has been the topic for today. Do note there is more rain in the forecast and a heavy rain warning has also been issued for Vanua Levu, parts of Viti Levu, Lao and Loma Viti Group. Let's quickly check out the west for today. Few passing showers were around which turned to cloudy periods. Heavy showers are likely for tonight. Eastwards from Pek Harbour to Suva, yes, heavy showers were also around and more is likely for tonight as well. And up north, it looks like a wet day all around. This side also experienced few showers. At sea, northerly winds 20 to 25 knots with rough seas. For the tides, high tide will be at 5 a.m. with low tide at 10.58 a.m. Sunrise will be at 6.05. For tomorrow, it doesn't look like a pleasant day. Showers are in the forecast for countrywide. Tomorrow's temps, all centers will be in the 30 degree range. And looking further on to Thursday, wet and windy spells are likely. And that's all from the FPC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked should bus drivers carry more lower denomination e cards? I think uh, bus drivers should carry a two dollar disposable card with them because the uh, majority of the uh, citizens uh, it's very hard for them to carry twenty dollars. I think bus drivers should carry less denomination of e cards because passengers cannot afford to buy twenty dollars disposable card just like that. <laughs> Bus drivers should just have $2 disposable cards because most families nowadays can't afford $10. So I think $2 should be fine. I personally think drivers should just have the $2 disposable cards because life nowadays is very hard. Having low denomination e-cards will ensure children and parents can both afford bus fares and travel without any problems. I would like to request if bus drivers can have $2 disposable cards with them for people like us who can afford to pay $2. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, the Electone has made its U.S. concert debut at an electronic music festival in Denver. It's part of an effort to spread the instrument's popularity from Asia to North America. Recapping the main story, search for missing plane and duo continues in Lombasa. Family waits in hope for missing flight instructor and telecommunications body clarifies ban phone issue. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, should buses continue to carry disposable e-cards? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day came all the way from Rotuma, sent in by Samuela Robin, a Form 5 student. Absolutely gorgeous shot. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. Radio Fiji One and Radio Fiji One, Radio Fiji One,